said it. First chicken, why did you say it? Oh, uh, we, we talk privately. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't just guess. <laughs> 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 Wow, this is nice. Sunbay, are you doing something with your keyboard you shouldn't be doing? <laughs> yeah, Sunbay. All right, so I server muted him. This house here is only 175. And it's, it looks nice. With Steam, anything is possible. And also all new people don't be afraid to stay around. We are always people here 24 7. So what is this like an apartment complex? Or And for Sikkim, is he supposed to announce anything, or is it just a fireside chat? Or... I'm right here. Okay. I just I just saw you were lighting up, but I didn't hear a word from you. I might have had my finger down on the button. So that was you. I, I guess new new um, like new new construction houses are the most expensive, right? The least expensive is raw land. Yeah, but I'm not gonna build a house on raw land. Have you not seen? Sometimes building a home can be cheaper than just buying one straight out. Yeah, potentially, but I need a place to live in. <laughs> Ned Scott, great to see you on Steam Speak. Welcome. Fierce, good to hear from you again, man. How are you? Man, I'm so happy to be part of this. Yes, 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 yes. Me too. Give me one second. I'm just going to play with my system. 
one more time. One second. Cool. Is push to talk the absolute best way to do this, or is there a way to leave voice on? You can do both. Did you get a suppression message? Uh, Ned's in the punk master group, so he should be able to just leave it on. Can you guys hear me? Absolutely. Yep. yep. Beautiful. Yep. One second. So, um, Fierce and I uh, thought we might have a, a Fierce side chat. Oh my gosh. Talk about some, some Steam ideas and uh, in the community. Um, what do you think, Fierce? I think that is exactly what we need. Um, why don't you start with subject uh, number one? Uh, Sure. Yeah. So, you know, we had a little talk about, um, I was just in New York this past week, uh, you know, conversing with some of the brightest minds in the space and it really sort of brought to a head, um, you know, some of the ideas that, that we've been, uh, you know, kind of batting around, uh, in the steam at NKHQ and, and one of them that that irresistible than ever community tokens you know um what i mean by that is that steam has the ability to support meta tokens that are absolutely first class where these tokens can be attached to account names they can be issued by people who own an account name and they can take on properties that are entirely under certain parameters, uh, parameters that would allow the tokens to function like Steam, where they could have properties such as reward pools, curation rewards, be to uh, be distributed to uh, what we might call worker proposals, people who are developing applications or use cases uh, for a particular community token or are going out and driving new users uh, to that token. Um, added for, and we're seeing lots of uh, real world use cases for these, or at least a lot of traction in the blockchain space. So wait, does that mean that we can, uh, we, that we can buy a Nate's house with uh, Steam on the Steam, uh, Steam platform on the steam blockchain <laughs> yes i i think that that could potentially be is um you know if you have if you have tokens and we, we've seen other models of of meta tokens on on different blockchains BitShares has uias which refers to user issued assets omni has tokens omni's based on bitcoin as his counterparty um, oh, this is just the greatest thing I ever no heard in my life. <laughs> and you know what's even better about it is is no one in the space yet has tapped into the ability to have tokens launch that instantly begin to support community growth, new business to form. Because one of the the things that Steam has overcome is it has uh, it has a set of properties that are nuanced in a way that allow it to, to get over the challenges of, of the friction of tipping. And it's one of the reasons that, that Steemit has been uh, so successful as a, as a young nascent company is that this, this cryptocurrency that uh, runs through it is easily transferred to other people uh, by methods as simple as, as upvoting others. 
And because the tips, the, the, the tokens leaving from uh, the, the tokens passed to another person don't leave from someone's wallet, but they leave from that general war- rewards pool. And, uh, you know, that gives it some, some, uh, additional viability guys. The, um, how do I turn off these notifications that keep going off? The settings, you got hit the uh, cog button and then you go to the notification. You can right click on the server and then server mute. Okay, I'm just checking all the locations now. Okay, let's see if that works. Um, so what train of thought was I on there? Oh, just that, you know, Steam has proven that if a token's nuanced in the right ways, that it has more viability as a community builder. And Steam has done a very successful job supporting applications like Steamit and busy.org and ChainBB because it flows through these applications in a way that supports uh, an exciting and engaging user experience. People aren't faced with the challenges and the frictions of, of tipping when they want to reward other people uh, because tipping in, in this system doesn't come from their own wallets. It comes from a general rewards pool. And that's functionality that can be mirrored across uh, meta tokens if they were to be issued on Steam. Other properties that would be carried with this is decentralized exchange. So I'll, I'll be able to <clears throat> make a first token, a first coin, and have it traded internally just like that, just by with some clicks of a button, beep, 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 done. You set your parameters for the asset. You decide whether that asset is going to be something that uh, can be changed over time or whether the properties are sort of immutable. Um, and based on the properties you choose, you know, it, it, you present it differently to the community and it would have a different purpose. But as long as you own that account name, Fierce, you can launch the Fierce token. Uh, you know, if you have the domain name space, then it's... it's uh, it's your right to, to launch that token would be the proposal anyway. And as soon as it's launched, it would trade against Steam and potentially all the other assets issued. The this, price this is right off the bat. Would the, uh, the, the markets would have uh, the pairings of other assets as well? Yes, potentially they could. So I, you know, we're, we're we're doing this fierce side chat and I, I really just wanted to, to sort of treat this as a, a way to, you know, just go through the ideas. This is proposal at best. I think it's, it's a very important conversation to have because it's so clear that, that there's a powerful use case here. You know, we're seeing the success of Ethereum right now where people are doing ICO after ICO and that's creating demand for F be a part of these, you know, these potential uh, new projects. Um, and the difference here is there's actually a lower barrier to entry to what we're proposing on Steam because on Ethereum, if you propose a new token, you also have to promise along with that a new set of technologies. But on Steam, if you were issuing a meta token, one of the primary use cases would be I'm going to issue, for instance, I would ins- issue a token to build a sub community to build a community around a specific topic. And that alone is um, attracting people around a common cause, um, you know, creates creates uh, value for the entrepreneur and for the community at large. I like that. Sounds pretty cool. So I like the idea that it's it's a lower barrier to entry for starting businesses because I think that's one of the, the the biggest drivers for for growth of the platform. Now the other thing is that's cool is is this whole um, advantage of the bandwidth rate limiting of Steam. So anyone who issues an asset potentially you know uh, has the same uh, user experience um, benefits across you know new applications or inside their sub community where users of the asset don't need to pay transaction fees 
to go upvote different content. Um, and that's a benefit that, uh, that they won't get if they, they go and try and build something like this on Ethereum. So basically, it is a big middle finger to BitShares. Well, I don't know about that. Um, you know, BitShares doesn't have that have the functionality of Steam. Um, you know, what we're proposing here are meta assets that potentially have rewards pools, where the issuer can choose how much of the uh, reward is going to content creators, how much is going to curation, uh, how much might go to worker proposals potentially. And uh, that's that's never really been done before. Um, but certainly there's a lot of uh, lessons learned from BitShares that, you know, I've learned participating in that system. And, uh, you know, we would certainly take advantage of, of any tech that's that's uh, been built there already that, that, you know, that we can. It'd be very useful for companies like Zapple later on when we decide to take in investors and be able to issue our own asset that we can keep whole, uh, keep track of and then do dividends through the Steam network. Yeah, I could see how there would be much more synergy for um, a play like Zapple. You know, you're 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 building something on top of Steam. It's only natural that um, you know the fundraising that you want to do would would happen more closely and in the same economy. So dividends will be possible. And so, um, you know, I'm not a lawyer and uh, going into dividends and talking about. Oh, uh, he means in the technology and the technology bit shares is about to add dividends to the system. So it's something to look into if you guys do go that route. So, so dividends, dividends can be accomplished in a, in a number of different ways, but they can be accomplished, uh, pretty well. If you have uh, 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 like a rainbot from IRC, like if you hold the uh, first coin on Steam and I want to send uh, 100 Steam divided on all the holders, you know, something like that would maybe be yeah, done. You would, just, you would just tip it proportionately to all the people who hold the asset, um, and that would accomplish, I think, what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. if it's going to be named, I think you should probably get away from the word asset especially anyone that's trying to start companies in the USA, it becomes really, really tricky. Um, True. Yeah, no, I, I think if Steam adopts this, um, certainly it needs a, 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 a very um, easy to understand. They call them pog, pogs and slammers. <laughs> I was going with Community Token for a while as a name holder. Um, Even um, token, 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 no. Would a Community Token be able to have its own reward pool? Yeah, so so that's that's pretty much the the you know the primary value proposition here is that you know what we've discovered with Steam is it has properties that are excellent for community building, sub communities and and sub communities with tokens. We want them to be able to take advantage of those same properties. So these meta assets, these meta tokens, would absolutely have rewards pools. That would be you know the primary uh, reason to launch a token on Steam is you would get to take advantage of that functionality. You would get to take advantage of the fact that, that there aren't transaction fees, there's bandwidth rate limiting. Um, and you'd be able to either, you know, use the token to build a, a fast growing sub community, or you could even apply a new interface and build some new tech on top of it to give it additional, um, you know, uh, value add and faster growth. Could they have their own uh, payout parameters, like uh, say that a person is posting on a community and they want to have only a six-hour payout period? Those types of parameters would be possible. I think. I think if this were to happen, you know, um, some inflection points where we'd have to say, okay, is this. Is this a scalable parameter? Does this does this parameter uh, provide the issuers uh, or the users the most bang for their buck? And is it scalable for the Steam chain as a whole? And some of these questions are still unanswered. But I think um, parameters and the more creativity, the more room for creativity there is, the better. If that's you know one thing we've learned from Ethereum is if you're able to apply apply creativity to one of these tokens, like the ERC-20 token, then you can give the token more of a unique 
so I'm all in favor of, of pursuing those different types of parameters. Some of them I think will have more uh, bang for the buck than other. Um, you know, for instance, having the rewards pool as an option, I think is, uh, is one of the biggest value adds. It sounds great. Just, I think we would want to avoid uh, one size fits all because we have that already and expand that to more, more tokens, the more parameters, the better. Yeah, absolutely. The, the one size fits all model. I mean, you know, like the UIA, for instance, the challenge with the UIA is it's, it's best use case is to, you know, provide an asset that can be backed by a promise. Um, and, you know, those are tough businesses to run, you know, that it basically is stating that you have to have a business in the real world and connect it to the blockchain. But with an asset like a community token, uh, it's different. It's, it's issuing a token that immediately can start to provide a value proposition to new users. Hey, come and be a part of this sub community and earn for posting. You know, it's all there right on the blockchain, right on the internet. There's no IOU for an ounce of gold or anything like that. It's, it's a very, um, it's a very fun and fast uh, proposition to new users. And I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's a game changer. Game changer. Well, time to go buy steam before it moons. Oh, uh, don't buy in front of me, man. Maybe a little, um, unrelated. I mean, it's related, but it's not specifically on topic. Should I wait for that? Well, some other things we were going to talk about in this first side chat. Yes, I, I have a little list here of, of things we should go through, and, and then we can open for some some questions. If you guys can write down your question as we go along, um, and uh, that, that'd be great. The next, uh, next thing on the list here, community tokens, but <clears throat> you also wanted to talk about uh other things uh not yes what did we have on the list there was you know um business to business oh right uh, so, so i think you know uh, you know and, one of the and, ways and delegated bandwidth so it is possible to land out steam power on on an internal market oh yes um so we're going to end up growing the steam community is by building in tools that allow for business to business like profitable opportunities uh, for people to go out and and get other people involved in steam and one of them you know very well could be the community token because now you know everyone can kind of be a, a steam consultant or a blockchain consultant and they can go to existing websites and say hey you know grab your your domain namespace and issue your token or integrate this token with your existing website and get rocking and rolling and, and start, you know, giving your users a reason to come back and participate and post content and curate content. And, um, you know, that's, that's B2B and Steam it can do that, but anyone who's a part of Steam can do that and can go out and pitch existing websites to be a part of it. Uh, other tools that will make that B2B process easier and faster will be things like a comments widget. Uh, we're not there yet at Steam it Inc. And, and I know a few people in the community have started working on it, but our widget, um, would be incredible because then you could go to existing WordPress sites or existing uh, publications, take for instance, the New York Times and say, hey guys, replace Discuss with Steam Scus or Steam Discuss and, uh, you know, let that, um, you know, be an iframe uh, from whatever company is, is, is hosting it and uh, we'll issue a token uh, for, you know, just take for instance, the New York Times, we'll issue the New York Times token through it and um, in New York Times could do their ICO. You know, we, what we saw recently last week actually was a company called Kick, which is a messaging app that has brought in, you know, several million users, if not uh, 10 or 20 million users um, over, their, um, over their existence. Uh, they basically announced that they're gonna do a token, but they're launching an ERC20 token. And the details of their white paper show that they're actually only planning to use the Ethereum blockchain as settlement. And they're planning to facilitate all of the, uh, the, 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 the cryptocurrency going through their app. They're planning to facilitate it through basically a centralized database. And I mean, that to me is a little worrisome. 
And I would much rather see companies like Kick uh, and you know anyone who's going to follow in their footsteps be able to use a technology that's fast enough and can scale with their application. So it would be our duty with MetaTokens to go out and say, you know, make sure you're using technology that uh, you know maintains the integrity of cryptocurrency, and as it runs through your system, it's protecting users. It's not it's not uh, being run inside a centralized service. And you know, with Steam, we could do that. Um, so I think it's almost our duty to make sure that, that we pursue this proposal of meta tokens in a way that will provide um, safety and sanctity and functionality to the rest of, of the Internet. People have questions around this subject? Well, I uh, got the comment. Um, would, you, like, would I be able to make a, a, a token like to label all the hateful comments as, with the hateful token and then filter out all the hateful comments. Um, yeah, we're, we're diving into the, the technicals here, but you know, with JSON metadata, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can tag content already. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need a token to do it. Uh, a token is, is, is meant for you know, price discovery and transfer of value and that sort of thing. But, you know, with the, the flexibility of the Steam blockchain today, you might be able to achieve uh, what you just described um, with tagging already. Um, would there be a minimum threshold for a token to be allowed to exchange into Steam? Or would every single variant be redeemable instantly? Well, there's no real redeemability. Basically, um, if you want to get an idea for how it works, go to um, openledger.info. That's uh, one of the primary uh, interfaces to the BitShares blockchain, and that will show you decentralized exchange. And basically, any of the assets issued on that blockchain trade against any of the other assets, um, it would work similarly to that. Uh, basically, if you issued the Nate Brun token, the nest. Um, then, as soon as it's issued, there's basically a market created between the nest token and Steam, and people just have to, um, you know, put up asks and and uh, and bids, and then the market starts to form, and maybe some transactions happen. And when transactions happen, uh, price is discovered. But there's no real redeemability. Redeemability basically means that there's a uh, middleman who is uh, promising to to make an exchange happen at a certain rate. Um, like you redeem an IOU uh, in these markets have real redemption properties unless there's a middleman. I think uh, Steve had a question and he was like to hear uh, three specific use cases for these tokens. Specific use cases. So community building as a business. So let's say that um, I've got the Rare Pepe account name on Steam, and I want to build a community around Rare Pepe. I issue the token. I make it a very decentralized token where the parameters can't be reversed. It's got a set inflation schedule and a rewards pool that you know issues 50% of the rewards to content creators and 50% to curators. Oh, and then let's add in another 2% that goes to people who are, um, you know, doing work for the community or something. Um, but the parameters, you know, can't change. The, 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 the inflation rates are, are set and the rewards allocations are, are set. Um, now I can start to build a business around Rare Pepe because maybe I own a bunch of Rare Pepe and I'm incentivized to, to make sure lots of people come to this community and pay a lot of attention to the asset. And um, yeah, eventually, I, I, you know, if the community becomes big enough, the expectation is the more attention paid to a token, the more valuable it becomes. That's kind of the, the, the thesis with, with Steam. We always say, you know, growth is, is the primary thing. And if we grow this thing, every single person who shows up and participates in the system brings their own tiny bit of speculation capital, uh, which could, uh, no guarantees, but could increase the value of, of, of Steam. Um, you know, that same thesis could be applied to just about any asset, whether it's a meme token or a token, um, you know, that's created to uh, to circulate in a new application. 
uh, it's 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 true whether you want to build yeah a new a new piece of tech in a new community or just a new sub community or a new meme community on Steam. It um, th these can be um, you know big hairy audacious goals that people bring to these tokens, or they can be you know small little fun uh, community tokens. Uh, you know the range would be wide. Uh, other things people could do is they could potentially issue uh, IOUs. Uh, they could potentially say, I'm going to issue a token, and this token represents um, in a real-world business, or it represents some re redeemability uh, for some other asset. Yeah, there's lots of possibilities. Only damn imagination is the, is the limit setter here. So this will support a lot of middleware. Yeah, so so middleware. I you know I, I think I put that on our list because um, on what we're doing at Steam Inc. You know, for the past probably five to six months, our primary one of our primary focuses has been on middleware. You know, when we first started building Steam it, we were building it directly uh, onto a Steam D node, and that was a great uh, proof of concept. We we showed that you could truly build a, a, a mainstream potential application directly to a blockchain. But as we continued, we saw more and more that we were going to need better organization of, of, of the, you know, the database behind the website to make development fast and uh, potentially, you know, super iterative. Um, and so we developed a concept called the buffered blockchain, which means you kind of take all the blockchain data and all the data you're getting from the website and you put it into a new format. Maybe it's a MySQL database maintained by the company that's running the website. And, uh, you know, that taught us a lot. And we're in the process of finishing that up. Our database there is called the SBDS. You can actually check out development on it um, via the Steam at GitHub. Uh, we're developing another tool called Hive, which is sort of an interpreter uh, layer between that database, the buffered blockchain, um, and the blockchain itself and the website. And, you know, by developing these middleware tools, we're able to um, basically keep up the integrity of, of the blockchain. We make sure all operations that happen on the website are still directly pushed to the blockchain uh, and that we can maintain integrity of, of all the, um, you know, the data that's, that's, that's left over in the blockchain and from the website. And, uh, yeah, I think I think those are important things for developers to check out. Um, it's it's um, you know when you're when you're developing something like Steemit, and um, you know it's kind of the first time someone's built a mainstream application on top of a blockchain. There's still a lot of problems that have never uh, even been run into by other entrepreneurs, you know. And um, I'm just very excited to say that I have been working with the most intelligent people that I've ever met uh, for the past year and a half. And uh, we're doing incredible work, you know, developing innovative solutions. And, and I can't wait to see where we are once we kind of get through this infrastructure phase and uh, begin moving faster on apps. Now, that's not to say we're not doing awesome work. Our mobile de development is really moving along at a fast pace now. And uh, I'm looking forward to mobile coming out as well. But anyway, I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole here. Um, and off of our uh, scheduled track, first. But what was our um? What was the last thing on our list? Well, we we talked first about community tokens, and uh, so it was B two B tokens, ICOs, community building business models. And what kind of time frame would community tokens have? Would it be before or after the fabric? I, well, I think community tokens may need a little bit of time, um, but I do believe that they're incredibly important. We do have two kind of planned hard forks coming up. I mean, one of them has already been announced. That's linear rewards, um, which I think will be a, uh, a very important milestone for the community. We'll have to see. I expect that everyone who's a part of Steam should pay attention to that and, and give feedback as, as the economics change. And we see what that does to, to community behavior. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited to, to see what we learned from that. And I, I'm very optimistic that it's a, a, going to be a very positive change. Um, after that, I mean, there's still some some more infrastructure stuff uh, on the blockchain that I'd like to see get passed um, with regards to um, sign-up costs. 
one of the remaining scalability challenges is in costs of signup creation. And we've, we've been developing uh, some very cool mathematical solutions to uh, lowering the cost there. Um, basically through a, a, an innovation of account creation tokens in combination of uh, proof of stake and proof of work. But, um, you know, I, we'll, be, we'll be posting more about that in the future. Um, also, no, go on. ETA on community tokens. There's a lot of infrastructure that's already been built for it. Uh, we would probably take a lot of the infrastructure from BitShares and then basically uh, insert, um, you know, different properties for for parameterizing these assets in ways that, that these tokens in ways that make them more like Steam, um, or or more potentially like Steam, or more you know kind of variations on Steam. You know, who knows what else we'll learn from from other experiments on on meta tokens. But uh, yeah, it could be a little while's away. But I think in the meantime, we can start to get people kind of jazzed on the idea. Um, you know, I've already been talking to several businesses who are super excited to potentially partner uh, with the Steam blockchain on this and, and bring over existing user bases. I've had people approach me with very successful websites. Uh, uh, an entrepreneur who runs one of the most successful poetry websites, uh, I was speaking to him the other day. He's like, let's do it. Let's integrate. You know, uh, someone who's running one of the, the top marijuana forums um, on the internet, uh, basically I had the same conversation with him. Uh, and that's that's the proof in the pudding right there. There's huge demand for this. People are looking at this and saying, how can I get a token into my product? And what meta tokens on Steam would provide is the easiest and most viable and uh, most potentially successful way of, of integrating tokens across content websites. You heard it, guys. Steam is the new pot coin. Go buy, buy, buy. <laughs> How about B2B interface solutions? Um, you know, that we covered that a little bit with the idea of like a Steam Discuss, but um, that's like another, it's it's something that could go kind of hand in hand with community tokens. Uh, you know, if you're able to to kind of consult websites and say, hey, I have an opportunity for you to, to launch this token for your business, a currency for your community uh, that rewards them in certain ways and brings value to your business. Uh, and I also have a widget that you can install beneath the content, the, the the original post content of your website that basically allows you to get off the ground running, uh, you know, in a matter of uh, weeks, if not days. That's just a very powerful pitch, you know, an out of the box business to business solutions for existing websites. You know, that's that's key to to taking over the internet, and um, I, I sort of see that as the next phase for. Um, for, for Steam as a, as a community. Um, and I want Steam at Inc. to be a part of that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, if you're thinking about these things, reach out uh, with, with your ideas too. If you're, a if you're a developer, by the way, reach out. We want to know who you are. I want to talk to you. Uh, I love meeting, you know, everybody who's working on, on different Steam applications. Um, nothing has been more exciting to me in the last, my entire life than, than meeting all the talented people that have become part of this community. And uh, if we haven't met yet, I want to meet you. Uh, Steve, I have a question for you. I mean, uh, Ned, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, I do marketing and advertising for a living. And some of my questions are what you like, how you plan to grow the Steam at user base and get more people to know about Steam and to reach out into different communities and bring, like, say, gamers and if you have like an advertising plan to go ahead and grow steam do you guys have any yeah, of we, that going we absolutely do and you know in the past um we are very much still in the infrastructure phase we are facing bottlenecks currently in the sign up process and uh, in a few other uh, 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 scalable capacities of the, the, the system. And we're addressing those right now. And they're sort of roadblock, roadblocks to doing um, you know, mass invitations to the public. So we absolutely have you know, the plan to go out and bring in you know, thousands, 10,000s of, of influencers and bring them in and then have them bring their user bases in. But currently, it, we can't handle it. 
So we're in the last stages of getting through those challenges, moving those roadblocks out of the way. And as they're moved out of the way, we get to this moment where suddenly the floodgates are open and there's nothing holding us back from going out and getting, you know, the top influencers in politics and in, uh, you know, extreme sports and in just about anything, you name it, we can bring them in and, you know, they have incentives to then bring in their user base. Um, this platform will blow up overnight millions, two million, three million users. This is not a hard number uh, uh, of people to bring to an application. It's mostly a matter of timing and doing it in a way that, um, you know, that is highly successful. If we were to do that now and spend the dollars to do that now, we'd be bringing people in and then, you know, not being able to support them in the way that we want. So let's get through this last set of infrastructure challenges and then let's bring in these millions of people and suddenly be, you know, one of the biggest names on the internet. Well, yeah, if, you, if you're ever interested, I've thought of some ideas once you guys figure out your infrastructure. Um, I find some of the hardest things to explain is to say someone that's not really not into crypt cryptocurrency, yet, say gamers or say, you know, your mom, your dad, stuff like that. Uh, simple way to go ahead and introduce them to Steam, how they can get paid and a really easy put together well just simple either video and very because you know to explain something complicated i've basically found a way to make it pretty easy to explain and that's kind of my specialty so if you remember my name and you want some ideas later it's the hulk 13 absolutely absolutely and 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 you know i appreciate that and what i would what i would uh what I would kind of encourage as well is that, you know, we are this, this community and everyone who's a part of this is, 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 you know, obligated to do their part. And it's not just steam at Inc. who's involved here. There's, there's many, many businesses involved on steam now. And as people have great ideas um, and are putting in work for the platform, of course, we want them to be rewarded for that. And uh, steam, it wants to help be a part of rewarding these people, but the blockchain, the, the beautiful thing about it is, is it's built in a way that can reward people for bringing their creativity and their time and their energy uh, to projects that advance the platform. So if you do have a plan for, for creating a video that would be effective at onboarding users, you know, that's something that you could potentially begin and uh, tease to the community or post for the community. You could potentially be rewarded for it. Um, and we'd love to, to see you, you know, take initiative on it as well. And then if you want to continue talking and working on it together, you can always reach me as well and we can, we can take it further together. When you're ready for it, definitely uh, let me know. Hey Ned, is is uh, there a, a little traction as well, and 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 show me, um, you know, sh show me something that's, uh, you know, got a few of the first steps taken care of as well, because that that will only make it easier for me uh, to jump in on something. Yeah. Where's the easiest way to contact you? Just uh, at my handle is at Ned. All right, so just send you a message. Yep. All right. And looks like there's a question here. It says, how will the platform be able to serve millions of users from a technical standpoint? Uh, you know, this platform, Steam, is, is one of the most advanced blockchain platforms, if not the most, um, out right now. And basically, it boils down to, to the, 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 uh, the networking code with um, you know, delegated proof of stake. You think about it, you know, there's 21 of these witnesses in every round of block production. What that means is you have about 21x compared to a centralized service. If Steemit were just Steemit, there were no blockchain and it's just running one node behind it, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what you're building. But with Steam behind it, there's an additional sort of uh, redundancy of, of, of 21 extra nodes carrying most of the same data. And that causes things to be a little slower than usual because the nodes all have to agree that they're carrying all the same data. Um, but at the same time, that is far, far more efficient than other blockchains out there um, that use proof of work and other more naive forms of proof of stake. So it just kind of is what it is. This tech has been developed uh, all the way back, um, been iterated over time. We've made some huge advancements on it. Uh, with Steemit, we upgraded Graphene to Chainbase, and uh, that's that's been big for us. Um, 
as we go along, I expect that there will be small scaling challenges here and there. Uh, and we are preparing to, uh, to deal with those as we grow. Um, but you know, we can get to those two and 3 million users and let's, let's do that. You know? Absolutely. So anyway, anyway, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say thanks for coming here. First of all, and this, these, I love everything that you're talking about here. This is exciting. Um, there is the main question I have though. I already, you already touched on it just a bit, but I'm very curious about the linear rewards. Do we have any kind of ETA at all on that? I know there's been some other things talked about for hard fort 19, but to me that seems by far the most important. Yeah, linear rewards are, are the next thing coming up. Um, it's all pretty much coded. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting code review uh, from the witnesses and from other developers on the platform. And I believe it's already scheduled. I have to go back and check uh, the dates. But uh, if anyone in here can confirm. It's like uh, a week or something, right? But some of the scheduling is already announced uh, on GitHub. First witness is ready to update as soon as peer review comes in safe. We are upgrading as so a vote for first witness. Shameless plug. That's good to hear. So, so um, yeah, I think that's um, that's most of what we had on our list. Fierce. Uh, I guess we talked about a bandwidth market, and that would be interesting, uh, or a steam power market, but. Um, yeah, because we have uh, we have all these investors that uh, that have invested and have powered up because they want to, of course, gain on inflation. But at some point, gaining on curation becomes uh, impossible with millions of users and communities and all that. So having a market where I can say, okay, I have all these uh, hundreds of thousands of steam power. Uh, Maybe somebody else can have better use for them for a while, and and I can put them up for for uh, renting for say two weeks, and they have to pay me five thousand steam dollars to be whale for a week or something like that. So Condra says, why can't we promote posts with steam power? I would just say I think that's exactly what we're all doing when we're upvoting. Um, you know, you allocate the. Um, the steam power to each post that, that you upvote. Uh, maybe he's talking about boosting it, um, which is kind of what the idea of the uh, the steam power market is. You know, you can kind of rent additional steam power for a limited amount of time. I think it's super interesting, and, and one of the reasons we were talking about it today is because I actually got a proposal from from a very talented C plus plus developer today, uh, basically suggesting that the the whole steam power market could be developed off chain today with the tools that we have. Uh, in combination with other things like escrow, which is also on the blockchain. Um, so there's potential there. Uh, talk to um, username at uh, uh, look into developing that. I know he was looking for a front end developer who might be interested. There's a very clear business model there and being able to take um, basically transaction fees. Um, you so kind of uh, you stu uh, sputtered out when you were saying the person's name. R hag, A R H A G, um, but yeah, I know he was looking for a front end developer. So if anyone here is interested in that project, you know, there's kind of a clear business model there, and uh, uh, you know, R hag's the the type of super talented person who might be able to to, to set the right direction for the project. But um, there's big possibilities there. Um, there's so much on our plate, guys. I couldn't be more excited. Um, I couldn't be more excited to be here with you guys. And uh, this past year and a half of building Steam and Steam, it has been amazing. And I want to thank all of you. Thank you. Uh, like someone yes. said, did you guys do any um, simulations or penetration testings re recently to see how much throughput you guys can handle? Seems like the website isn't always snappy. Did you guys do something recently or? Well, well, the website. So the website's a bit different from blockchain scalability. So the website, we're we're constantly uh, looking at speed and download times and uh, all that stuff. Um, and we're actually quite advanced. We're we're super set up on um, AWS right now. Um, and uh, yeah, all I can say is we're we're constantly looking at and constantly improving. And and we've got a great team that's working on that. Um, but it is different from from the blockchain. Blockchain scalability is a little bit different. 
Yeah. So, when do you guess uh, Facebook will start using the community tokens? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is that uh, before or what? after they buy out the whole blockchain? <laughs> Why doesn't someone get a, a little prediction market up and, and, and we can see what the, uh, where the market thinks? Good job, guys. Um, good talk. Uh, I got to uh, look forward to uh, being back soon. Yeah, thank you, Ned, Scott. Uh, always a pleasure to have you and uh, amazing, amazing information you are coming with here. I think, I think once, once this sink in. Oh, oh, you know, I, I had another use case, another use case in my head. So, so I just want to get this out before I go. So when I was at Token Summit in New York on Thursday, um, in, uh, I forget his username, but his name was Emmanuel, came to me and he showed me these water bottles that had the Steemit logo on them. He said, yeah, I've been in Mexico. I sell these water bottles promoting Steemit. I thought that was amazing. And he said, Ned, you know what I want to do? I want to, I want to have a barcode underneath all the labels that, you know, if it's scanned, it gives the person Steem. And, you know, that just fed right into the community token idea for me. I'm like, well, you know what? You know, maybe it's Steem, but maybe it's a community token underneath that label. Uh, you know, it's the water bottle token. Or something like that. There's so many, so many use cases for this, guys. And um, you know, if we do it right, it would empower lots of entrepreneurs and lots of businesses. Um, so anyway, I wanted to get those ideas out because you know I think it's important for us to talk about it. And one way or another, we'll get it done, whether it's through Steam at Inc. or or some other you know developer force that that appears uh, for the blockchain. You know, the more we decentralize, the more people working on this, the better. If you're a C++ developer. Uh, you know, and you need any any help getting started or or or, or any encouragement to, to do some development on Steam, you know, I implore it and reach out to to me or anyone. And uh, anyway, good stuff. I have, guys. A, I have a question about the blockchain. Um, how many posts per second would you say the blockchain itself like can, could handle right now? Well, well if there would know, be we... like an influx of users coming in. Talk about operations being up to a hundred thousand transactions per second, but when you start to include, um, you know, the size of the transactions, you know, with posts, they get larger and larger. So it could be less. But if we're just talking about transfers of 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 tokens, then you know, uh, we talk about a hundred thousand transactions per second. But no one's actually tested up that high. But it's all theoretical, and um, uh, but either way, you know. Um, as we grow, we'll solve the you know more and more scaling challenges, and uh, yeah, it should be a fun ride. Should be because I, I mean I can see this thing where you're pulling in as many posts as a website like Reddit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that, those these are the challenges that we want to face. You know, we want to be in a position where you know it's like okay, can can the blockchain handle you know 500 posts per second? You know, and we can do that. We can do that confidently. Um, and uh, that's about Reddit's rate. I believe they do about 500 transactions per second. So um, being at that moment and looking back and saying we thought we could do it and we're doing it. And uh, if not, you know, then, uh, then then we're making all the, the improvements necessary to, to make it happen. But uh, let's stay practical and let's stay focused and, and let's keep having fun. All right, guys, I got to keep running. Um, Thanks for your time. Again soon. Have a good night, guys. All right. Good good Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Welcome to the Ned After Show. <laughs> Where the ponchos and lotions come out really quickly. Oh, wow. Ned's hair coin. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, guys.
you got a lot of new things to think about today, right? Yeah, indeed. indeed. Now <laughs> I have to sell my car to get more steam. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think uh, I think that the community tokens are going to have a lot of use cases. Um, you know, Ned outlined a couple of them, but I think most important is to remember that basically it's up to it's up to the how creative people can get. Um, and these community tokens um, are going to have different values, and just the ability to have user issue assets on your platform in itself um, is very valuable because, I mean, like you said, communities can tie their token into Steam, but also companies can tie their token into Steam. And um, and that actually opens up all sorts of doors in terms of fee market structures and um, and uh, you know different different types of uh, like content that can be posted on Steam. And uh, yeah, I mean so I think for the, the for the Steam token itself, user issued assets are going to be um, very useful. Um, and for the user issued assets themselves, there it's up to them to create their own value. But um, it should be it should be very positive. There's no reason that it's a bad idea. Sounds hey, to me makes... like N N Nest should be one of the first ones. <laughs> well, that could that could be months for all we know. So that's a, that's a more of an issue right there. Yeah, yeah we can do a coin swap later. That's right. But it could make demand for Steam right now because you need Steam to trade for your favorite token. Yeah, absolutely. You know, aside from earning it. Whoever gets porn first wins. Well, you know, porn could actually, that's interesting you mentioned that, because porn is like a huge industry, right? And if we had a, a Pornhub token on Steam, that would obviously be insanely valuable. Um, there we go with the porn again. <laughs> Yeah, we seem to talk hey, about it. That a lot. is the vast majority of the internet, so it's gonna come up sooner or later. <laughs> Sad but true. Yeah, we're just keeping it real here. <laughs> keeping it real. Well, you young guys want the porn, but we old guys, we got the money. Keeping it <laughs> real nasty. <laughs> why don't you guys why don't you guys start a webcam show? Oh wow! Get so much money in it. You should all be coming up. Move that to the Steam Actually, power that could be guess. that could be useful. A webcam girls and their own issued assets to uh, their viewers. <laughs> you know the really great thing is about this type of announcement. It's something that the the regular cryptocurrency um, communities understand. You know, like when we were talking about you know. Um, Changing uh, the, re the linear reward, you know, they didn't understand that. They just that just they don't get it. Or but when we were talking about lowering the interest rate, they got it. But they're like, well, it was too high in the first place. But this, it's UIAs. They should understand that. I think we should, yeah, we need to stay away from the word asset because that that starts to get people in trouble, and they don't realize they do got to file taxes, and you're supposed to be doing a lot more than you're supposed to. How about ma magic points? <laughs> internet points. <laughs> Fake internet money. Yeah. 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 That, that, mar that markets well. There we go. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're new to this community, we're, we're just kind of a community that, that chats about Steam and, and cryptocurrencies in general. So uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. And uh, glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> for <laughs> Actually, you could create gambling sites with these user issued assets. You just have people buy in at a certain uh, value of the coin, and then on their site, they just use those uh, those coins themselves, so they're not gambling with actual money once it heads to their site. Then it's no longer illegal. Oops, that's fake monies. <laughs> well, you know, if if uh, if. I, you know, I don't know um, what exactly the implementation is, but um, going from user issued assets to binary prediction markets is not too big a leap in um, in in terms of implementation. So it would be interesting if we had a a prediction market on Steam, um, and I would be you know I'd be excited about that. 
And I feel like, I feel like that's a hot market right now. Well, it's just a variation on smart smart coins. So if prediction market, then smart coins too. They have a set prediction market on Steam for that Facebook one. You have to use bit shares for now. If yeah. they say for it, then yes, they'll buy it. If they don't see it's going anywhere in the future, then they're not going to even touch it. That could go for any company. But the prediction market itself would make it more likely to happen if, if people are invested into, the, into that future. Looks like steam is rising a little bit, guys. Oh my gosh, you know, you know it is a big middle finger to bitchers. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's really that big a middle finger to bitchers. It's not exactly the same thing, but... Uh, it's a it, bigger thing because we have both liquidity users and now assets issued by it, those users. I mean, it's amazing. I think it definitely could be um, good. I think it could be good for bitchers and Steam because if Steam adopts the user issued asset model, then the BitShares community can kind of rally behind us, and we have, uh, you know, we have we have a uh, a big user base already, that's much bigger than BitShares. Um, and yeah, like you said, like you said, liquidity. Yeah, I, I I know so many people that have assets on BitShares that are that will be coming over to Steam or Golos or anything but BitShares because it's too complex for anyone well that's more of on the site side that's what happens when you get engineers making uh user interfaces I mean, yeah i mean this is i haven't digested this completely yet but i'm starting to feel the same euphoria as i felt with nest <laughs> sure uh first chicken by the way you might want to unmute everyone now I haven't muted anyone. Uh, well, a lot of users in the chat are saying that they can't. Uh, that they it can't automatically mute. mutes if they're not set up for push to talk. Oh, yeah, okay. Some of us just aren't talking. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, yeah, if moderators can go through the list and unmute them. Because if they are brand new and just join this, the voice chat before they get the blue status, it will be. They will be server muted. I'm fine. I personally find bit shares to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, and this is D Winblood. Yeah, it's more or less the way they design their sites. They're all going with the similar fill on every single one of them. That's kind of an issue when it's open source. But no real designer has come in and uh, decided to work on the project itself. For me, it's yeah, more it's... about how all the password management and stuff works out. Well, then they go nuts over the mouse overs. Someone needs to tell them to chill out on the mouse overs. Um, well, you know, I think that if Steam did um, a similar type of thing to, to pictures, I'm fairly confident it would come out looking um, significantly better in terms of user interface, but also a product of our glorious community here is that um, we'd probably get a better interface than we could even dream from some community member because you know we just have such an expansive community we're gonna maybe get someone to dedicate some time to it yeah it's in the best interest of the community to have someone get it done or for them to do it themselves okay everybody should be on uh, on mute now if they were server muted Just go to your settings and unmute yourself if that's the case. It's a great function to have, actually, in, you know, if a lot of noobs comes in and to raid. If there's community tokens and if they're trading against Steam, is there going to also be collateralized? Um, Debt, where you know margin trading, basically. Uh, I think I think uh, margin trading is easy to implement, but whether we choose to is, remains to be seen. I'm sure it's easy to implement. It's just is that's an that's another one that suffers from the UI and um, 
it would be something I could imagine being hidden for the, you know, sure, early yeah. on. But if someone comes up with a great UI for that, I mean, that's just a, a boon for liquidity. Well, I think the decentralized exchange is a problem that needs solving, right? Because we still see it all the time. Bitfinex, Mt. Gox. And I think that, you know, BitShares is, it's, it has fantastic technology, um, but it really does suffer from the UI, like you, like you said. And um, I think that Steam has the potential, if, if we choose to go down that route, that, that far down that rabbit hole, to, to really become a really big exchange. And if we become a big exchange, then, uh, then you know, then that obviously boosts the value of Steam. Oh, it will boost. It will boost. All right, so I saw yeah. people here 24. You all gonna get rich, boys. You all gonna get rich. I wish. I'm ready for it. Pump, 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 pump it up. Now spread the news. Let the Steamians know so that they don't sell out cheap now. Hey, hey we don't need to tell everyone. I mean, come on. Hey, we hey, gotta hey. let the weak hands get out. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Let them get out. But make sure you get some extra. If you if you have an extra car, it, you know, sell it. Get some Steam. Because, I, it, you know, everything here is coming into a logical fruition. Steam is uh, becoming more and more with this, yeah. with this types of innovation added to, added to it. It becomes more and more a place where I think I will be spending more and more time on as things just build itself out. If I can have my companies on the Steam blockchain in the form of a uh, community, I'll call it a company, but others will make communities, I'll create companies, others will make funds, you know, it is uh, transparent and easy and you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to get out of the Steam ecosystem to get into something else. And that, that's good. Oh, and feel free to speak, uh, anyone that, that have, don't be shy. This isn't the place to be shy. Thanks for the heads up from you guys that posted saying this speech was going on. I was so wrapped up in my own world. That was kind of a fresh, a refreshing escape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a great great speech. Community tokens, business to business solutions, delegated bandwidth, SP markets. Yeah, so so what do you guys think out about uh, delegated bandwidth, aka you know rental steam power? How do you, how do you guys feel about that? We were just talking about it in here the other day. That's why I was wondering the person that had talked to him if they were in here uh, listening to a conversation that was already been going on. Maybe. <laughs> I 